welcome. My name is Cody, I'm from Lasso, and today I want to show you how to read LSDyna D3 plot files with Lasso Python. Python is our company's open source Python library. You can install it easily as shown down here. And I will focus today on the Dyna module or to be more precise on the D3 plot class. The D3 plot class makes it possible to read LSDyna result files coming from the solver, as you know. The data inside the files are usually arrays and we what we do here is simply expose those arrays and give you access to them through NumPy. Um, this makes it very easy and straight to use. Uh, mostly suitable, by the way, for data science and machine learning. Um, so you can uh, jump ahead um, if you, that is your focus. So we support 134 arrays currently, which is most of the file spec. Uh, we do not support CFD though at the moment. Please keep that in mind in case uh, you need it. The reading here um, has some technical advantages compared to, for example, a post processor. Um, we do zero copy reading, which means actually um, it is very fast. We do not copy memory if not absolutely necessary, and you ha even have influence on that. This makes it kind of faster than most native codes and also post processors. And that is the major reason why it's so suitable for data science and machine learning, because um, I.O. time costs a lot if you have a lot of files to run and process. In the following, I will explain a little bit the internals, how the data loading uh, works. Um, in case you're interested, stay tuned. Otherwise, you can skip the section. Note, though, that this might help you in the end tune the performance and reading of LSDyna result files. LSDyna results usually consist of either one or multiple D3 plot files. First file usually starts with the header and is followed by the geometry. The first file may also contain states, though often it does not. The Second file and any further only contains one or multiple states. In default mode, our D3 plots are read as follows. There are two buffers built up. The first one is the header and the geometry, and the second one consists of all the states concatenated linearly in memory. What we do then is we reference all the fragmented memory from all the states um, and collect it together in a numpy array. We provide you then these results such as node displacement easily accessible as this array. Please note here that we only reference memory, we do not copy it and this makes it very efficient. The time here for loading the files depends on two steps. The first one is pulling everything into memory which depends on your hardware or the size of the files of course. The second step which we do is the so-called deserialization. Um, which is a constant in time 100 milliseconds operation. In buffers mode, every file is only loaded into memory at once to avoid memory clutter. Here we have one or multiple states also in the files and we simply copy out whatever we need into a bigger numpy array. We can assure that it's only one copy which makes it also quite efficient. At the same time, we do this for every file in the process. Uh, this can be controlled through the arguments and files to load at once or st state array filter. Now I will show you how to use the d3plot class. First, we got to import it from the Dyna module. Um, we also import two further helper classes here, which will come ha in handy in the process. Then we can simply um, load the d3plot by giving the file path to the first file. Very important, all the other files will be loaded, all the state files. And that's it. Now we execute the command and bam, here we are. Like it's already loaded. Please note that it only takes roughly one second and it loads everything, every result, every array. It re simply loads everything. And this may distinguish it a lot from the post processors where you can remember it takes quite a while to read this array, then that, and here and there. And we simply do chuck everything at once by default. And then see what has been inside by watching the keys of the arrays dictionary and you can see which arrays were actually loaded. Um, also we have here further arguments to optimize reading depending on cloud usage or uh, weaker machines. We have the state array filter um, where you can filter out for example state arrays such as node displacement. Um, or I did a typo here, no problem. And then you can see here down that all the state arrays got reduced only to no displacement. The geometry arrays are always red, um, but they also don't occupy usually 
even closely as much memory as the state arrays. When you um, give this optional argument, it also switches internally over for the explanation before to buffered reading from zero copy reading. So it's a little bit slower, but um, at the same time, it reduces your memory footprint uh, quite a lot. What you can also control is for the argument and files to load at once, uh, how many files are actually pulled in memory at once. Um, and this also reduces the runtime memory footprint. And these two arguments are usually enough to make it uh, quite well usable on slower machines. Now we can want to access, of course, the arrays. So we simply can go a fourth and say, okay, here is my node displacement. And we print here the shape. Uh, the shape is 21 is the time steps. These are the nodes uh, and three is X, Y, Z here. Um, for a better usability, we have this array type class, um, which also contains these names and it gives you auto completion and type safety. So this is a preferred way to use, though I often also return to strings here in Jupyter notebooks and stuff. Um, now what you can also do is, is actually you can read arrays um uh femzip files first of course you only need to specify the femzip file and then simply specify femzip a uh, use femzip equals true um please note that this process takes a while actually because the femzip decompression library is not very fast here uh, we use the freely available one and it's just simply uh pretty slow so nothing to blame at us uh we cannot make it for faster unfortunately and this is also hurts quite a bit in data pipelines um, but that is the way it is um, what we can then do of course is the same thing as before you can uh, simply print out the keys and you have access to all the arrays as uh, you did in the previous case um, one noteworthy uh, utility which I still want to explain is of course uh, in case you have parts you want to filter out parts that's very very useful um, we fought a little bit in the beginning now if you for example go for an array like element shell effective plastic strain then you have the issue that actually if you watch the shape of this you have 50,000 elements but you don't know which part they belong or in case you want to filter out certain ones of a part, that's a little bit of a hustle. Um, you can do this manually by crunching through one, some of these um, arrays which contain the part indexes and then you need to associate them to the part IDs. Um, and it's a little bit of a hustle. So we built a, a utility function for that. So what we first do is of course, we take the strain array here and we simply for God's sake, um, print out the shape again so you have the original shape then what we need is a filter a part filter so get part filter is the utility function there we enter the filter type shell and we filter out um, the parts 13 and 14 I looked that up before um, and here we go now you have the mask what you can then do is when we go into the P strain, we take all 34 uh, time steps, but we only take the elements of the mask and check the shape. And as you can see, now we only have 17,000 elements, and those are the elements belonging to this one here. Um, another cool feature, which I totally forgot to show up here, is also the plotting function. The plotting function gives you the capability to plot the d3 plot in a standalone html similar to qd python um, it's very useful for uh, debugging it is also useful for maybe sending components or picture of components um, to colleagues or whatever you want to do with it it's very simple called a plotting function you can also give it an export file path and then you have this uh, 3d html which you can send around and do whatever you want with it um, this is everything there is to say about this library. It's as easy to use and as straightforward as this. Um, the arrays are the major part of it. Um, you can jump right in and toss them into TensorFlow, PyTorch, or whatever you do. Um, do fancy math or plotting, um, anything you wish. 
It's very simple and straight as mentioned before. Um, our project is hosted on GitHub. So in case you have issues, you can open an issues tab here. Uh, please start it also if you like. Uh, we always welcome this. And in case, of course, uh, of any further requests, you can also contact us by email. Um, for smaller requests, you can, by the way, also do issues. For bigger requests, usually if we don't need them, uh, you need to kind of do an order to our company so we fulfill your needs. Um, one of the recent projects, for example, was uh, implementing a D3 plot writer. It's not available publicly right now at the moment, but will soon be. Um, and we really hope that this library grows, um, especially step by step through these um, user demands and projects and whatever's in order to give you an easier everyday task. Now also please note that this library is totally free. You can use it in your company as you like. Um, and also in your products, we don't uh, have any licensing fee. Uh, we simply want to give you the opportunity to jump in and do more data science in CAE, which is simply still um, very small and very limited. I hope you liked the video um, and it helps you to get started with the Lasso Python Dyna. Um, it's very simple, very straightforward, and we really hope that this eases your pain and your everyday task and it helps you to automate, get faster, and make solutions smarter. Thank you.